Remember all this time from chapter 10, chapter 11, and now chapter 12, Daniel is by the river. Uh, it's the third year of Cyrus. He's right at the end of his physical life. Uh, he already knows that the uh, some of the exiles have gone back under Zerubbabel to rebuild the temple. But you know, Daniel has all these questions about uh, what's going to happen to God's people. It just seems as if uh, things are not, are not what they were. And just a, a remnant went back. And it seems as if most of God's people are living in mediocrity and in apathy. What's God's plan for his people? It, will Israel ever be great again? Uh, are, is, is God going to fulfill his plan to her and through her? These are all the questions bouncing around in Daniel's mind. And the Lord so faithfully through these visions, through these angelic messengers is letting Daniel know, Daniel, I do have a plan for, for my people. And that plan is very comprehensive. And that plan is already set in motion. That, that plan has a timeline, a very specific timeline. And I am going to accomplish all the things that I said I was going to accomplish. And one day, a King Jesus, Messiah, will rule and will reign from the capital of Jerusalem. And the entire world will uh, live in the righteous, under the righteous rule of Messiah. So all of this is coming. It's just not going to be now. So Daniel is receiving these amazing specific prophecies. And here we are in Daniel 12 and verse 4. So look at what it says. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So Daniel, that's it for now. That's what God is saying through this messenger. Uh, that's it for now. Daniel, shut up the words. There's nothing more that I'm going to give you prophetically to be on this, this communication, and seal the book. So though that's a twofold way of saying the, the prophecy, at least to this, to, to Daniel, is complete, and now it needs to be authenticated, not, not taken away from and not added to. When, when something was sealed, that meant you couldn't tamper with it. You couldn't go back through and amend it or add some words. or No, it needs to be sealed, and it needs to, the words are, are complete. Uh, when, when God gives his word, he means what he says. When God gives his word, he says what he means. That's why at the end of the book of Revelation, for instance, uh, the curse is pronounced. Uh, anyone that would take away from these words or anyone that would add to these words, uh, that there's a severe judgment and punishment for that. Why? Because God takes his word seriously. If the word of God is not to be trusted, if the word of God has been mixed with man's opinion or man's notes, or you know, some of it is the word of God and some of it is the conjecture of human beings, then what, where can we put our confidence? You know, we must have supreme confidence that the prophecy is what God said and it's only what God said. Otherwise, we have absolutely no, no repository for our faith. Remember, faith must find a resting place. Uh, my faith has found a resting place, not in device or creed. I trust the ever-living word. Uh, and so the ever-living one, the word of God. And so it's the word of God that becomes the object for our faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So the angel is very specific to say to Daniel, Daniel, this is it. I'm not going to add to this, and I'm certainly not going to go back and take away what I've said. And so shut, sh shut your, the words and seal the book until the time of the end. In other words, the, the book of Daniel is going to have a special 
mm, what's the word I'm looking for? It's gonna have a special significance, a special weight uh, during the end times. Why? Because it's, that's when it's most applicable. Uh, it can be applicable in every generation from the standpoint of looking forward to and trusting to God that will. And even we who look back at some of the parts of the book of Daniel that have been fulfilled, we can derive great confidence in the word of God because of the fulfilled parts. But just imagine if you are a Jew during Daniel's 70th week, uh, during the time when the latter half of that week, when the judgment of God comes down upon this world and all of these horrible and horrific things will be taking place, the book of Daniel will be a special comfort, will be a special instruction to God's people. The time of the end, that's what the Bible is referring to here in verse four. And then the Bible describes the time of the end as being a time when people will go to and fro and knowledge will increase. Now, a lot of people will take the latter half of verse four and talk about the amazing uh, ease of travel in these end days. You know, people can get on an airplane and go across the country and have an appointment tonight. You know, later on this week, I'll fly out for a meeting that I'll be preaching on Friday night and Saturday in Seattle, Washington. I'll get on a plane and within five hours, I'll be there. And I mean, it's an amazing thing. You know, I go to Israel. I have a little Israel company called, called Land of the Bible Tours. And I'd love to have you come with me. But I'll get on a plane in uh, Washington, D.C. and I'll fly directly to Tel Aviv and I'll, I'll get there and, get, and just get going. I mean, think about it. My daughter lives in Australia. I'll get on a plane and and it's a, it's a long flight, but think about it. I'll be on the other side of the world. Uh, so people go to and fro. And then the Bible says knowledge shall increase. Do you know that uh, in these days, knowledge from the standpoint of knowledge available, not people being smarter. I don't think people are getting smarter necessarily, but but there's more knowledge and there's more access to knowledge. I mean, the, the World Wide Web, I mean, you can ask Google anything. You can ask Siri anything. It's a, the, the, the availability of knowledge through technology is just, it's unbelievable. Someone told me that knowledge doubles every 18 months. Things that can be known. Unbelievable uh, to, to think the exponential growth of knowledge. And knowledge doesn't necessarily mean that we're closer to God, and it doesn't necessarily mean that we have a greater intellectual aptitude. I'm just saying that knowledge itself, as far as information, so uh, increased travel, increased information, we're seeing that right now. Now, there would be some that would say that that verse simply refers to going to and fro, looking for answers, and the answers will be available because they're going to consult the book of Daniel. Knowledge shall increase in the sense that people are understanding what's happening and they're able to have a reference point for the tribulation because they're going to consult the book of Daniel. Either way, what a tremendous prophecy God is giving us in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4. Now look at verse 5. Then I, Daniel, looked... And behold, there stood other two. So in addition to the messages and the messengers that he's receiving, the Bible says, there are two others, angelic beings, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. So there's going to be a special communication now. And why is one on this side of the river and one on that side of the river? I don't know. I mean, I could conjecture. Uh, you could conjecture. You know, why would God position one angel here, one angel there? One angel is actually on top of the water. We'll, we'll talk about that uh, tomorrow. Uh, I don't know. But I do know this. Uh, God often, when he would communicate a message to somebody, we find this especially true. Well, we, we find it certainly in Daniel. 
uh, but uh, Zechariah in those eight visions that he received or uh, Ezekiel or uh, Jeremiah, God would often show the prophet something, not just give them words, not just uh, say, hey, read this, but he would, he would show them a scene. And in that scene, then he would give them a message. Sometimes in, in our Bible understanding, it's important for us to see something before we understand something so that when the word of God comes, it's in the, the, the situation itself, uh, what we're experiencing or what we're seeing or what we're doing helps us kind of like a hermeneutic tool to understand what God is saying. I think that happens even today. You know, the word of God does not change. We have the word of God. It's complete. Uh, we can trust it. Genesis to Revelation, the complete canon of the Word of God. But have you ever noticed that uh, portions of the Word of God uh, are more understandable to you in certain situations than they were perhaps before when you've seen certain things? And I'll give you a great example of that. You know, there are parts of the Bible that I didn't fully understand until I became a father. And then when I became a father, I, I now, now with this experience of holding a baby, this experience of loving this human life that is a product of, of you and your, your spouse, and, and these two shall be one, and all of then, then oh, I'm, I get it. I understand it more deeply. It's almost as if the experience became a, a hermeneutic tool for me to understand verses about Abba Father or verses about these two shall be one or verses about loving our children or having no greater joy. And those are verses I could understand intellectually before I had children, but there was a deeper level of understanding when I experienced it. So often in the Bible, God would do that for a prophet. Uh, to help them have a greater level of Here's understanding. And so here in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 5, we're having this angel stand on the one side, this angel stand on the other side, and God is going to teach Daniel uh, something more. Now the prophecy is about to finish. God's already told Daniel, hey, we're done. Put a seal on this thing. Uh, I've given you all the information you're going to receive. And, 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 and yet... Uh, there, there's one final piece here that we're going to see, and I don't want you to miss it, but I can't tell you about it today. So we're going to come back tomorrow, and then we're going to come back Friday. I'm trying to pace myself. We're going to come back Friday, and we're going to finish this book. And so I want you to stay engaged, stay buckled up, and let's see what God has for us here at the end of the book of Daniel. Have a great night tonight in your uh, church Bible study, and we'll see you again tomorrow. God bless.